Uh, my name is Christina Arwood. I'm the marketing coordinator for the College of Liberal Arts. I'm here with Izumi Greibel. She's um, a former USI instructor of Japanese. Uh, what was it, 11 years? Yeah, is that 10, right? 10 or 10 or 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, now you're an author of a new yeah. book. It's called A Promise to Live For, which mm -hmm. is a true story. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little more about that too. But I wanted to start by asking, um, you actually received your master's degree mm -hmm. from here, right? Right. In yes. education? Secondary education, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, how did that education prepare you for the career you went on to pursue? Well, um, I majored in secondary education, but I never taught in secondary education. I just kept oh. teaching at USI. Uh -huh. when, when I was getting my master's, I was already teaching part-time. It was through this program called Exchange Japan. So I was oh. already teaching here part-time okay. while I was studying. And as soon as I got my master's, I was hired full-time here at USI. Mm -hmm. So I just kept teaching in college level. So uh -huh. I never went to secondary education, uh -huh. you know, like a lower level. Uh -huh. And I enjoyed teaching college kids, you know, oh, yeah. a lot. So, um, yeah. But education itself, um, for me, coming from Japan, mm -hmm. English is not my second, I mean, first language, oh, right? Yeah. So it just helped me tremendously. This lady, you know about the language skill, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, English for reading, writing, you know, speaking, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it, yeah, it was, yeah. Um, while you were here, mm -hmm. um, I heard was it that you were the first Japanese instructor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How was that being a new, like, <coughs> forging this new path? Mm, it was really. I mean, I didn't know what was. I was getting into first, you know, <laughs> like I, I got language training, how to mm -hmm. teach Japanese before I came here, mm -hmm. and everybody, you know, like I, I forgot how many people were in this program at that sent every year they did this, uh, sending Japanese, you know, group to different universities mm -hmm. where they have a Japanese program, mm -hmm. and so um, each of us got, everybody got the training first, and then we were sent to different universities throughout U the U.S. Okay. And I had no choice. I didn't choose USI, uh, but US USI, or the program matched me with USI, and mm -hmm. I was sent here. And yeah, I, yeah, it was in 90s, so uh -huh. Japanese language was, you know, the economy was booming. Oh, A yeah. lot of students were really interested in learning Japanese to be able to use in the workforce. Nowadays, I think chi China, Chinese mm -hmm. language took it over. And the people who wants to learn Japanese nowadays, they're interested in Japanese culture through mm -hmm. animes and things oh, yeah. like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's been changed, you know. The yeah, but um, it it was great. I mean, it, you know, it was just I was so happy to know there are people, ja American people, who are interested in Japanese language and culture. Oh yeah, and. You know, it's not an easy language. Japanese is one of the four difficult, most difficult languages uh -huh. for American English speakers to learn. Chinese, Japanese, Arabic, oh. and Korean, I think. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense because those languages are so different yeah. from the Roman characters. Right, right. I right. took Japanese while I was a student here, yeah. um, I think for just about a year, mm -hmm. because I had visited with friends for a spring break. Mm. And then after that class, we went for another week in um, 2011. Right. And it was just so amazing and so much fun but the, the language was a little it's difficult, difficult. Yeah, it's yeah. totally you can't really relate right you know much yeah in the mm -hmm. language like French or Spanish mm -hmm. and, and you know you can you have the, the similar root right. or grammar mm -hmm. but yeah Japanese is totally different <laughs> but the sentence yeah. structure too yeah, that always got me right right because <laughs> it's very different <laughs> I know so but it was yeah I really enjoyed teaching yeah, yeah. so um, when you Left USI. Mm. Uh, was it 1994? It was two, 2002. 2002. So. Okay. Two th yeah, I was off for a little bit when I had kids. Okay. Yeah. So I went back part time after I had kids. I didn't mm. want to go back full time, but mm -hmm. so I did full time and part time. You know, most of those ten years. Okay. Was here. So yeah. Do you have a favorite memory from when you were here? From USI. Uh -huh. um, as a student, when I was you know oh, three yeah. years, I was a student or two and a half, three years. I learned how to play euchre. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great! Yeah, that was great. And also, um, I went to basketball games. You know, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And then back then, Bruce Pearl was the coach uh -huh. here. You know, Bruce Pearl. I don't you know, remember. You know, he's the now he uh, he coaches where. 
I just watched Matt Men, you know, March Madness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's now coaching. He's one of the top, you know, coaches. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool, yeah. Yeah, so but he was, really yeah, coaching, you know, USI basketball team. Uh -huh. Yeah, now I can't say I know this guy, <laughs> you know, watching, yeah. Did you ever play? No, I like, never played. Yeah. I, pl I was a volleyball player oh, for, throughout fun. my life. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you still play? I do, oh, actually. Cool. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of fun. I was never good at sports, yeah. but I liked volleyball a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I took that while I was out here, too. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough. Yeah. Intramural? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a long time ago now, yeah. but um, yeah. that's really great. So, um, post USI, you mm. and your husband, Tony, who mm. uh, we interviewed earlier, actually. I mean, you've been all over the world, mm. and um, I mean, the list goes on of all the countries you've been to. Mm. Uh, and you've started D.C., Indonesia, Canada, Pakistan, Japan. I mean, it must be kind of difficult to balance that mm. with the family life, too. Mm. But um, I was willing to stay home with mm. the kids, mm -hmm. which I have no regret doing that. Sure. I know some people want to keep career, which is a great thing, but for me, staying home was just so fortunate I didn't have to work mm -hmm. and to be with the kids and, you know, involved in school, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, it's always hard to, you know, keep your career when you're mm -hmm. moving every two, three years, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I was happy to stay home. And um, what was the question? I'm sorry. Oh, no, um, I was just yeah. curious about if that was difficult. Um. Yeah, so the, f yeah, first, like, six months, mm -hmm. you know, it's the settlement time. You oh, know, yeah. you get your shipment, it gets, you know, you find out what, which supermarket to go, oh, your yeah. way around, you know, about school, you know, kids, you know, make sure kids are adapting to mm -hmm. new school. So I spent, you know, maybe, like, six months, you know, for that, and then after that, you ex start exploring. You get mm -hmm. network, all the diplomatic uh, community, oh, yeah. local community. You make friends, and yeah. and it's always hard, you know, just like kids too. It's mm. hard to leave, you know, say goodbye to oh, them yeah. at the end. Yeah, but uh, nowadays you have Facebook. Oh and, yeah. You know, you can always go back to visit them, which mm -hmm. we have done. So oh, you know, in, you know, like we visit Indonesia. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and then we visited uh, China after after we left. You know, uh -huh. so you know, we still keep in touch. So yeah, it it's hard, mm -hmm. but um, we just act up, accept it. And mm -hmm. there are more pluses than minuses. Oh sure. At least for me. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I just. You know, you gotta enjoy it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it seems like it would be yeah. a great time. So, um, how have those travels and those experiences that you've had around the world mm. shaped kind of your own life experience and worldview? Mm. I, I always tell this to kids too, but you know, people tend to look at you, how you behave and say, and you know, and then you, they categorize you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, all Americans behave like you, you know, uh -huh. the same thing, you know, they do, they consider me like looking how I behave mm -hmm. and they think, oh, all the Japanese act like that or all, all Americans think that, you know, things sure. like that. So you feel like you're representing that country. Mm -hmm. So you, I always tell kids too, they look at you and kind of form the, you know, stereotypes. Oh, sure. So make sure you, you know, don't misbehave or how do you call it you know you just like present yourself yeah well. mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're sort of like ambassador yeah, you know yeah. in a Very sense true. so um that's i i'm so conscious about it what i say and how i i behave yeah um in front of other kind you know people from other mm -hmm. countries you know they look at how i am mm -hmm. as a country you know Oh, yeah. So well, and kind of speaking about mm. that, um, that brings me to the book that you wrote. It was mm. a story about your mother, mm -hmm. right? And uh, was it the travels that she took? Yes, yeah, she took when she was 10 years old mm -hmm. after World War II. The family mm -hmm. was living in, uh, uh, in Manchuria, which was occupied by Japan mm -hmm. during the World War II in northern Mon um, China, northern mm -hmm. part of China. And they became refugees after war ended, and the, the part was returned to China. And Japanese government just didn't have the way to bring them back to Japan for a mm -hmm. year. So they were like 1.5 million Japanese people were left in China. Oh. And then 10, when my mom was 10, a year after the war ended, my mm -hmm. mom was 10, and one of her siblings, six year old brother, uh, were, uh, got the news that they can go home. Mm -hmm. And the f there are several siblings, so the parents sent 
to with this person to with this family and things oh, like okay. that because the, their mother was really ill mm -hmm. so the father decided to stay back until she gets a little bit you know uh, strong enough mm -hmm. to get back in fact she passed away um, never could go home but of mm -hmm. course mom and you know her siblings they already left so they didn't know about her passing mm -hmm. until they got home but anyways mom was sent with her little brother with one of my grandpa's colleagues to go back to Japan but this guardian just disappeared so it was just two of them mm -hmm. had to walk like 320 miles or you know like long distance oh, for yeah. a month oh following all the Japanese people you know to get to this port mm -hmm. somehow they managed to get to this port after a month and get on the ship and get back to Japan so this book is about ordeal oh yeah that, you know how the family from the time when the family moved to China to mm -hmm. Manchuria <coughs> in 19 early 1940s Mm -hmm. till 1945, the summer of, 90, or fall of 1946, when they came back to Japan. Oh my gosh, yeah, what a journey. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if any of us can really imagine that. No. So what inspired you to write it? Did, uh, mm -hmm. Was it just conversations with your mom? Yeah, my mom always talked about it, so I knew about it. So I was so always interested in those stories mm -hmm. ever since I was little. And when I was in Beijing, um, in 2014, I think, um, I took mom to the area where she used to live, and she started talking more about it, and yeah. a lot of memories came back, so I was writing down. So I thought, I'm, I'm gonna write this down, like maybe publish, self-publish 10 books yeah. for me and my you know, siblings and for kids to just to, to keep as a family history, you know? And then, as I was writing, and then I thought, and, I, and some of my friends said, oh, if you publish it, I, I mean, if you write a book, I can introduce you to this publisher. Oh. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try. So I wrote, finished writing it, mm -hmm. and I sent it to the publisher, and first the publisher, without reason, reading it, she said, oh, there are so many books like this out mm -hmm. there, I don't know how it's gonna be. So I said, well, okay, you read it, and if it, you know, you don't think it's good enough, don't worry about it. Month later, she came back. She said, "Let's do it." Oh, great! So yeah, yeah so I, I was so happy that you know the the publisher th saw the potential mm -hmm. in this book, and it's a personal story that not many people have heard. You know, well, this is a story of a refugee, mm. a couple of re refugees. I think that's very resonant today, even mm. with as much as you hear about refugees right, in the news. Right, right, exactly. So, I think that's really so you important. can relate. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I know. So. Yeah, it was. Then my mom did all the illustration actually oh, really? for the book. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to show some of those. I think that would be really mm. nice. Um, and I think you published it first in Japanese. Yeah, is that in right? Japanese. Yeah, two and a half years ago. And, and how many pages is it? It's not big, but it, we wrote it so that my mom's wish was for that ten-year-old. You oh, know, yeah, can yeah. read it and can relate. Yeah. So we, I wrote in simple language. Mm -hmm. With um, yeah, so that they can read, you know, and of course, adult can read it too. Sure. You know, they can, yeah. And an English version is the same thing. Okay. And our older son actually did the translation. Oh, that's so yeah. great. Uh -huh. And so for the drawing part, though, mom, mom is not a professional, mm -hmm. you know, writer, drawer, or a painter or anything. So it, it's nothing great, but it just shows her feelings and oh, memories, yeah. you know. And um, yeah, it was such a hard process for her because mm. she had to dig out all the you know sad mm -hmm. and painful memories that she just buried for a long time. Mm -hmm. So she, mom, I wasn't home, but my dad, you know, was home, and she, you know, he told me later that mom, there were times that she was crying so hard as she drew those. Yeah, but she said at the end it was a good healing process mm -hmm. for her, and finally she could close you know, had a closure for the war. Yeah. So I was happy to hear that, you know. Yeah, that I, you know, I thought it was, I kind of felt bad for, you know, putting her through this. Mm -hmm. But at the end, she said it was good. Yeah, so like therapy. Yeah, you know, right, 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 <laughs> right. That's so, really great. Yeah. So uh, the Japanese book well was well taken, and good. yeah, we had the second edition. Oh wow! Out. Okay, yeah. very good. Congratulations. Mm, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Japanese, the same company, we, because of the copyright and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, the same company did the English version. Okay. Publishing. 
So unfortunately, it's not sold, and the hard copies are not sold in American market at this moment. Right. Only the Kindle, you know, the e mm -hmm. ebooks on Amazon.com. So um, yes, a bookstore is kind enough to promote it for me. Oh, great, yeah. yeah so. And we'll include a link, too, for, mm -hmm. for you. We have it in some of the promotions, so we'll right. make sure that yeah, people yeah. can reach it. Yeah, if they look up Facebook, I have some, you know, uh, the a Promise to Live For, and then, for. yeah, and mm -hmm. Facebook, we have a Facebook page for that, too. Yeah, yeah, well, that's so great, and I appreciate yeah. you talking to us yeah, about that. You. I don't know, um, that was all the questions I had, but yeah. if there's anything else you wanted to mention about your life yeah. or your mother's life, or? Um, you know? Yeah. No. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much for doing Thank this. Thank you.